Now, today I was in the process of making a video on the Mr. Beast, Ava Chris Tyson, and all of the drama that's been happening over on Twitter or X, whichever one you want to call it. But yeah, I was in the process of doing that video. And as I was going to look at like Mr. Beast's uh, statement towards Ava Chris Tyson and Ava Chris Tyson responding to all of this like drama that's been going on, I noticed that almost every single person who made a video on Ava Chris Tyson, no matter how censored the video was, it was getting age restricted. Creators like Pegasus, Omezi, Kavos, Lyrix, and Sensitive Society all posted their statements on Twitter saying that every single video that they made, or almost every single video that they made on the whole situation was age restricted. Even Pegasus went as far as to say that he typed in a title of a video and it didn't even come up. And it was a video about Mr. Beast. He says that it's kind of weird that that would happen. Even if you type the title of the video word by word, it still is very hard to find. So I'm thinking right now, that YouTube is trying to protect their golden boy. And it's crazy because it's not even really about Mr. Beast. It's more so about Ava Chris Tyson, which is like a bigger like issue in this whole entire thing. Now, if you don't even know what I'm talking about, there's a whole big thing that was happening over on X where Ava Chris Tyson was first called out in a video that was titled something like this video will make you hate Chris Tyson or Ava Chris Tyson, whichever one. And during that video, it pretty much went over all like the the weird screenshots that were brought back up and his weird connection with Shadman. Now, same thing with Sensitive Society in his video. I really don't even know who Shadman is or like the whole entire lore behind him. But I, all I know is that like he was like a creep, like a weirdo who like made Lolly and Lolly's like a whole different thing. Ask Tipster, he'll probably give you a whole 101 word essay about the whole entire situation, like Lolly in general. So yeah, Ava Chris Tyson had like this weird connection with Shadman, especially back in like 2016, 17 and 18, where Ava Chris Tyson would reply to him on Twitter and would eventually commission him to make a painting or like a, a lolly a poster, I guess, of like something, something really weird. I'm not even really going to get into it, but that was all brought up in this video and how creepy Ava Chris Tyson was back in the day. Another thing that was brought up after the video was Chris Tyson back in like, I think 2018, 2019, one of those made a video on his second channel. Well, made a video on his main channel, I guess, where he literally makes a video and links like the revenge prawn of Jeanette McCurdy. The Jeanette McCurdy from Sam and Cat or like from iCarly, he links it in his either description or in the channel links. And uh, Chris tells people in the video, oh yeah, you could check it out if you want to. I'm not really like telling people to not look at it or not, but oh yeah, I have the links. So I'm pretty sure people are trying to defend Ava Chris Tyson in this situation to be like, oh, well, Chris really didn't tell people to actually look at the links. He's not really telling people to do that. He just put the link there so people could see if they wanted to. And that's just weird. After this, there was like even more evidence or exposed videos that came out about Ava and how uh, supposedly back when she was like 21 or 20 or even 19 years old, she was grooming younger people who were either contestants on the Mr. Beast channel or people who won money. And they're 14 or 15 years old, which is, I think, actually, I think it was 13, 14 or 15 years old, which is kind of nuts. Imagine using Mr. Beast as a gateway to get room on little kids. That was like insane. And that's one of the bigger reasons why people are making videos on this because Mr. Beast is huge. He literally has contestants on his page from the very beginning where he'd give them money or where he would like give them a reward. Or I remember there was like a, uh, a video where he's giving my 1 million subscriber some type of money, I believe. Something like that. It's kind of crazy that Ava would use Mr. Beast to getting good with like the people that like the little kids are like the the teenagers and yeah eventually one of them would say that there was no like malicious intent when i think his name was lava was talking to ava and he went on like a smear campaign trying to smear like sensitive society and a cheeto which is like another huge thing that a cheeto and and sensitive society had to talk about because i guess lava said all this stuff got him confused with like another youtuber named like bronin or bronon or bro one or whatever and took about 30 hours just to even reply to sensitive society and when sensitive society went out of his way to even dm him like multiple times then lava never even replied so it made like a cheeto and sensitive society look like they're lying and mishandling the whole like information but i watched both of their videos and they didn't even speak about that situation at all it just made them look bad because it took them about 30 hours to even retract the statement but i don't even think lava deleted the tweet that's the thing i think he just put underneath the tweet that it was 
wasn't them that he was talking about and how he, he messed up and how it was actually Bronin or Broan or Bro One or whatever who actually was making the videos that were clickbaity, obviously. After this, Ava would actually reply, but it wasn't really necessarily an apology. It was more like a really half-assed apology, if, if I'm being completely honest. She'd write on Twitter and say, I'd like to apologize for any of my past behavior or comments if it hurt or offended anyone. It was not my intent. Seeing recent events, we've mutually decided it's best I permanently step away from all things Mr. Beast and social media to focus on my family and mental health. Now, she posted this at 3.34 p.m. And I saw today that she actually ended up responding to these things, I think a couple hours after. So she responded to her own tweet either like a couple hours after or an hour after. I'm not really sure because it wasn't really live when I saw it. Like I saw it like a couple hours later, but she'd say, I want to add, I never groomed anyone. The person who gets brought up in these accusations at Lava GS has vocally supported that they are false. Having said that, I humbly apologize to anyone I have hurt with my unacceptable social media posts, past actions, and to those who may feel betrayed by now by how I used to act online. To lump these two factors together to create a narrative that my behavior extended beyond bad edgy jokes is disgusting and did not happen. In past years, I have learned that my old humor is not acceptable. I cannot change who I was, but I can continue to work on myself. I don't want these accusations to impact the hundreds of people who work at Mr. Beast, which is why I have stepped away. Now, this isn't a terrible apology, but it was like not really even going over like a lot of the stuff that was coming out. She does like a blanket statement about everything that came out about the edgy jokes, which have been out for a while. Just nobody really wanted to cover them, I guess. Like not even like the edgy jokes, like the lolly jokes, but even like the edgy jokes from like 2016 or 2017 edgy jokes that nobody really even like commented on. But after this, another Twitter user named Nathan actually posted three videos. Actually, while I'm actually recording this voiceover, he, he posted another video with even more supporting evidence ag against Ava Chris Tyson. So I'll play all three videos and let you guys decide if you believe them or not. Chris Tyson from Mr. Beast used me and manipulated me and did very inappropriate things with me while I was about 15 years old. I was actually friends with Lava GS at the time, who is the main victim of Chris that everyone has been talking about these last few days, who claims he isn't a victim, but we all know he is, and we all know he probably got paid off. Not only that, but he's also under an NDA from when he worked for Mr. Beast Gaming for two years, and he tried to get me to join Mr. Beast Gaming himself, Lava. He's the one who actually sent me the contract and tried to get me to sign the NDA, at which point I ended our friendship because... I knew they were just trying to silence me. Me and him were both initially involved in running Chris's Discord server, helping him uh, set up his Twitch streams and moderating them. Nate's calling me. Hey, what's up? You're on stream. You, you just leaked your address. Please end your stream. As well as other technical backend things that he needed help with. This Discord server that we were a part of had about 10 people in it, most of whom were minors. I'm not sure how they got in there other than me and Lava. He won a giveaway and Chris invited him after that. And Chris invited me after I saw one of his tweets asking for help setting up a Gary's Mod server for the 10 million subscriber Mr. Beast video. This turned into us having lots of private conversations with Chris and playing video games with him for hours on end. Not only did we do a lot of unpaid work for him that he promised he would pay us for, he would also frequently bring up sexual topics that was definitely not appropriate to bring up around 15, 16 year olds especially with him being like, I don't know, 20, 21 years old. He would even go as far as linking me several different corn and hentai videos throughout the time of me talking with him. Not only that, but he had an NSFW bot in his Discord server before he made it public. So when it was just a private server, uh, his little circle of miners, and he would use this NSFW bot to spam different corn images, corn images um, alongside all these 15 year olds. He would also frequently call me dad and daddy as well as the others, which I guess we all kind of just took as a joke at the time. You have to think this is someone who we looked up to at the time, we idolized, we thought was the coolest person in the world, so they couldn't really do any wrong in our eyes. But looking back, I was definitely uncomfortable uh, at being called, I was definitely uncomfortable uh, at being called daddy by a 20 year old. Um, and it, even just thinking about it now, it's just uncomfortable. This server later went public and became his official Discord server, but before it did, he had me and Lava spend multiple days scrubbing this Discord server clean of all of the N-words he had sent in it, as well as his friends, as well as 
deleting the NSFW channels and making sure no one could see that he was spamming corn to minors. This story is so much bigger and runs so much deeper than any of you really realize. So if you want to hear more and you want a part two, let me know. This is part two to yesterday's video of me talking about Ava Chris Tyson and what they did to me when I was 15 years old. This video has all the proof in it, all the receipts and all the screenshots. Thanks to an old friend of mine who was a moderator in Chris's Discord server at the time, Cookie. Now, Cookie actually went ahead and downloaded logs of all the individual channels on Chris's server before it went public, knowing that this was kind of being covered up and he kept the logs of it for himself. He actually reached out to me here on Twitter and I'm gonna provide a lot of the screenshots backing up the claims that I made that Lava refuted. For example, I made a claim that there was an NSFW channel in the server where Chris would spam corn. Here you can see Chris talking about locking down the NSFW channel to true gods and anointed only. Um, by the way, this is in 2019, I was a true god and I was a minor. Not only that, but you can see me right below it, Nathan.RTX saying, this is a bad idea. So even I knew as a kid that this was a really bad idea. Here is Lava himself talking about starting the commencement of cleaning the server, word for word. I said, he was talking about scrubbing the server. He says that never happened. Here you can see him talking about it as well as me and uh, Cookie himself talking about it. I just want to make this video real quick, uh, disproving some of the claims that Lava refuted. Uh, and showing that they actually are true, but I actually have thousands of Discord messages to go through in these logs that I was just provided by Cookie. Shout out to him for giving me them, and I'm gonna be going through them and posting an update video with some more. After this, Mr. Beast actually responded, and it was a way better response than people may have even thought. Mr. Beast wrote on Twitter, Over the last few days, I've been aware of the serious allegations of Ava Tyson's behavior online, and I am disgusted and opposed to such unacceptable acts. During that time, I have been focused on hiring an independent third party to conduct a thorough investigation to ensure I have all the facts. That said, I've seen enough online and taken immediate action to remove Ava from the company, my channel, and any association with Mr. Beast. I do not condone or support any of the inappropriate actions. I will allow the independent investigators the necessary time to conduct a comprehensive investigation and will take any further actions based on their findings. So it seems like there's going to be something way more serious going on if Mr. Beast is able to find even more about Ava. It seems like a lot of people are kind of split between this though. Because on one hand, a lot of people are saying that what Ava did was incredibly wrong. But then on the other hand, people are way more focused on people mis misgendering Ava when they're making their videos rather than the things that Ava did that was wrong. On Twitter, I saw people going after like Moist Critical and Kai Sinet because they misgendered Ava throughout their video, but there's way bigger like issues at hand than somebody misgendering somebody. I would have misgendered somebody and I really try not to if I mess up. If I mess up, then I cut it out. But I think it's, it's more important to focus on the situation at hand rather than the misgendering of Ava Chris Tyson. I already know that YouTube's probably either gonna censor this video or take it down or again, make it only for 18 year olds to watch it. But I think it's an insane situation and because it's one of the biggest YouTubers on the platform, it amplifies it. And for anybody in my comments that say like, oh yeah, you're just trying to profit off of the Mr. B stuff. Oh yeah, why aren't you talking about the Cody Co stuff? I see you, I see you and I replied to you. But the reason why, a, like a generous reason why, and a genuine reason why, is because Mr. Beast is the biggest YouTuber on the platform. If something happens within his group of people, people are gonna be talking about it. And yeah, I didn't start doing like the community post until like this whole situation happened with Ava, but I thought that I should start doing it more often because of situations like this. And yeah, I didn't cover the Cody Co stuff, because one, he never even replied. Two, I'm waiting to see if anything else comes out or if he does reply, because then it would be a half-assed video because it would be everybody else's allegations without his reply. And also, this is a huge situation that also involves other YouTubers like Elvis the Alien and a couple other people that were involved, which is like a whole nother video, which I'll be making on this channel because now I'm gonna be posting on this channel. But yeah, I wanted to get the record straight that I do YouTube to entertain people, to build a community, and to keep people informed. People who support me, thank you. I respect it. People who don't like me, thank you, and I respect it. But I'm gonna make videos that I find interesting, and if you like it, then like it. If you don't, then just don't watch it, you know? But thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.